an Enigma machine. This was widely used before and during the Second World War by the German armed forces, amongst others, um, in order to provide secrecy for wireless messages. Wireless provides zero security. You need to scramble a message before you send it because the enemy can listen in. And this is a machine they chose to use. And they used it to encipher literally millions, quite literally millions of messages, several million messages during World War II. It's simple to operate, although difficult to break. The operator merely has to set up to a range of components of the machine, plugs on the plug board, rotors here, starting position and so on, and then he merely types in letters on the keyboard. If he types in an L, for instance, it, it, it turns into an M. The machine doesn't transmit that. It's not a transmitter. It doesn't record it. It doesn't uh, in any way remember it or type it out. And the minute you take your finger off the L key, that's gone, and if you say, hang on, what's, what did I get? I'm not sure. I'll press it again, you get something different. Because every time you press a key, a rotor goes around, and the rotors have the wiring which links the keys to the valves. So keyboard for input, lamp board for output, rotors which go around during operation. And therefore, the setting of the rotors, the position of the rotors, as revealed by these three little windows here, the position of the rotors is important. To make the machine clever, so that the operator doesn't need to be clever, it acts what we call reciprocally. So if I press L at this point here, it gives me J. If I turn the rotor back and I press J, it gives me L. So the machine acts reciprocally, and that's the basis for encryption at one end of the wireless link and decryption at the other end. If we use uh, this example here uh, that I've laid out before, if we have uh, the rotor set to 010221, and it's absolutely essential to have them set correctly, if we key in uh, the word Leibach, the name of Leibach, if we press the L, we get an M. If we press the A, we get an H. Uh, notice two rotors went around that time. If we press the, G, uh, the I, we get a G. If we press the B, we get a K. If we press A, we get a T. And if we press C, we get, oh, I'm getting it all there, uh, bad contact. And if we press uh, H, uh, we will get a V. So we should, we had a bad contact there, but it should have been a W. Uh, that we would send this string here, this uh, seven characters, which don't reveal where they've come from at all. Uh, if we send that to the person we're in contact with, he receives by Morse code, by wireless, M H G K T W V. If he sets his machine up exactly the same way as the sender's machine was set up, so we must turn these back to show the same rotor positions, 010221. So that's 010221. If now, as receiver, we type in M, it gives us L. If we type in H, it gives us A. If we type in G, it gives us I. If we type in K, it gives us B. If we type in T, it gives us A. If we type in W, it gives us C. And finally, if we type in V, it gives us H. So the machine has turned those seven letters back into the original. And it will only do that with one position of the rotors. So if I now press V again, it does not give me H, it gives me J. If I press it a third time, it gives me D. Because remember, every keystroke changes the wiring pattern inside the machine. So it's essential for the receiver to have the right setup of the machine because otherwise he will not be able to turn the message he has received back into the original text.